Hello everyone, my name is Mae Park. Welcome to another video tutorial on my YouTube channel and my blog. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a floral themed card using the ink blending and stamp layering techniques. I'll be using the new inks and stamps from all to new, but you could use any inks and floral layering stamps you may already have. I'm also going to share a few tips on how to embellish your cards and decorate matching envelopes. As usual, I'll share the behind the scenes video at the end to show you my craft desk after my project is done. So make sure to watch the video until the end. Before I start, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Altenews November 2018 release products. If you don't want to watch, feel free to skip this part to jump on the card making process. Now I'm going to turn on some music and I'll be back soon. I'm going to start ink blending on a piece of A2 size green colored cardstock with three shades of inks from the Green Valley Over Ink Set. I'm inking the lightest color grass field for the base layer of my entire background using a blending tool. I'm tapping the color off the paper first before adding it to my paper directly to prevent from having harsh lines. Then I'm moving my ink blending tool in a circular motion for smooth blending. For my medium color, I'm applying shadow click to the bottom and center of my panel. Then I'm going to apply the mountain pine ink heavily to the bottom of my panel to create an intense color. To create a gradient ombre background, I will overlap the colors between each shade of green colors. It takes some time to get a better result with blending, so I'm going to keep applying ink until I'm happy with my background. I'm going to create two more ink blended backgrounds using the new ink colors from Delectable Delights Over Ink Set and Enchanted Garden Over Ink Set. If you don't have alternate inks, you could use any dye ink pads you may already have. If you don't have a colored cardstock, you could use a white cardstock, but you might take more time to complete your background. If you are a beginner at ink blending technique, I strongly recommend you use the light shade of colored cardstock to create an ombre background. To get a better result with ink blending, I prefer to use an old blending foam rather than using a brand new foam. I'm also moving my ink blending tool in a circular motion to prevent from leaving harsh lines from the edge of the blending foam. I placed a piece of print paper underneath my project to protect my work area. I'm also using a post-it note to place it underneath my right hand because I don't want to pick up some ink from the inked background and transfer it to the other part of my background. Your ink blending might look splotchy in the beginning, but once you keep blending with inks, the background will smoothen out once it's dry. Now I'm going to open the focal point of my card. I'll stamp the layers from the hand-picked bouquet stamp set and hit emboss the outline image using the rose gold embossing powder. To make my work process easy, I'm going to start stamping the outline images first using the light color which is vanilla cream. Here I'm using the original mystic stamping tool for stamping 
and I'm going to leave the stamp on the misty door for now and you'll see why in a bit. Since my stamp set is brand new, I already seasoned my clear stamps using an eraser to prevent from getting splotch images. I'm going to arrange the first layer of my floral image on my paper and ink up the stamp with a frost pink ink. Then I'm closing the misty door to stamp the image onto my paper. If you don't have this misty stamping tool, you could use a regular acrylic block or stamp press for stamping. I'm just using my misty here because this stamping tool helps me stamp the images in a perfect placement and get a nice impression. For the second and third layer of my flower, I'm stamping the images with coral berry and ruby red inks. I'm keeping the insert card of the hand-picked bouquet stamp set next to me so I can look at the layering guide while stamping. If you are not good at choosing the colors for your layering images, you can also refer to this guide as it includes four examples of color combination. I'm going to keep stamping until I finish my floral bouquet image. Once my stamping is done, I'm going to dry my paper with my heat tool. I'm going to place my panel back to my original misty stamping tool and treat my paper with Inca Dinka Embossing Magic Powder Bag to get a nice heat embossed image. Then I'm going to ink up the stamp with alternate embossing ink and close the misty door to stamp the image on my paper. I'm pressing my misty door with even pressure to get a solid and intense impression. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some Altenew Rose Gold Embossing Powder onto the image and tap the excess powder onto my paper. I'm using my small paint brush to flick away any stray powder. I'm going to preheat my embossing gun for about 10 seconds until it reaches its maximum temperature. Then I heat set the image with my heat tool until it's completely melted. I'm going to cool down my paper for a few seconds to avoid smearing the embossing. Next, I'm going to pull out the coordinating die from the hand-picked bouquet die set. I'm placing my stamped panel and die between cutting plates. I'm also placing a piece of print paper over my panel to prevent from picking up any dirt on my cutting plate. Then I'll be running them through my Spellbinder's Platinum Diker machine. Now it's time to do some stamping. I'll be using my original Misty stamping tool again so I can stamp a couple of sentiments at once. I'm going to pull out two sentiment stamps from the inked rose stamp set and place the stamps in diagonal on my inked blend panel. Then I'm going to ink up the stamps with alternate embossing ink and close the misty door to stamp the sentiments onto my paper. Please note that I'll be stamping twice for each sentiment to get a solid and intense impression. I'm stamping the sentiments toward the center of my card front, but you could stamp them on the entire background if you want to. I just wanted to leave some breathing room on the background so it's not distracting. Now it's time to assemble my card. I'm going to mount my stamped panel on the A2 size top folding white card base using alternate glue tape. Then I'll be mounting my die cut flower on the right side of my card front using 3M foam tape. I don't know about you, but the most challenging part of my card making process is to choose the right sentiment for my card design. So I always love to have some extra sentiments ready so I can match some of the sentiments temporarily with my card front to decide types of font, size, and color of my sentiment. I'm going to pull out a few sentiment stamps from the kind confetti stamp set. I'm prepping a piece of black cardstock with anti-state powder bag to remove any moisture, static, and oils. Then I'll ink up the stamps with alternate embossing ink and stamp the sentiments on the paper. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some alternate pure white embossing powder over the sentiments and tap the excess powder off my paper. If you have any stray powder left on your paper, you can use a dry paintbrush and piercing tool to pull it away. Then I'll heat set my sentiments with heat tool until the embossing powder is completely melted. I turned my sentiment into a banner using craft knife and ruler. Since I'll be mounting my sentiment banner on the right side of my cut front 
I felt like I needed something on the left side to balance the entire design with my focal point. So I'm going to draw two black lines using a Sharpie pen and alternate artist marker. I'm also going to trim the end of the banner with my scissors to create a fish tail shaped banner and add some dash lines on the left side of my sentiment banner using a white gel pen. I was going to finish my card after mounting the sentiment banner on the card front, but I thought I needed something else on the background to support my die cut flower. After testing out a few different embellishments, I decided to add some black dots around my flower using tonic nouveau crystal drops to add some interest and details on my ink blended background. To finish off my card, I'm stamping the sentiment inside my card using the Craft Life stamp set and another sentiment on the back of my card using the Crafty Friends stamp set. This is just a small finishing touch to my handmade card. I also made a matching envelope by heat embossing the outline image on a flap of my envelope. You can also seal your envelope using one of the new stickers from All to New. Do you dress up your envelope? If so, how do you decorate your envelope? Please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. This is a set of my three floral themes cards featuring the same products and techniques. Which card do you like the best? I'm not a fan of color purple, but I think I like the card in the middle with the purple ombre background. It just goes well with the floral die cut image. By the way, I ended up using the sentiment from the Build a Flower Color Charm. This is it for today. This video is part of Altenew November 2018 Stamp and Die release blog hub. Be sure to check out my blog for more details and leave a comment on my blog hub post for a chance to win a $30 gift certificate to the Altenew online store. If you have any questions, please leave comments below and I'd be happy to answer them for you. I hope this video tutorial inspires to create a card using the ink blending and color layering techniques. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done it yet, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss any new videos from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye-bye!